We've just returned from a seven night budget cruise with a cruise line we've never really heard of before. Join us in some of the most spectacular ports, enjoy all of the incredible food, explore this ship with us which is very different to any other ship we've taken before, and answer the question, was it worth it? We were so surprised. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Well, welcome to Athens, Greece on this brand new adventure. That had to be the easiest check-in that we've ever done for any cruise. It was so well organized. Basically, you just turned up at the desk and said that you were here, filled out a quick health questionnaire fit form. Then we went and got this to go and show inside that we've done the health questionnaire form, then simply dropped off our luggage, and that was it. We are going straight into the terminal. It's so quiet in here as well, so very excited to share the details about this cruise because it's going to be a really good one and a really unique one. Thanks to Celestial Cruises for inviting us on board. But our opinion as always is ours and we'll tell you exactly what it's like. So let's get on. So yeah, we were greeted with a big friendly welcome. Also got information about excursions. So we do have excursions included. Everybody does have excursions included, but you can buy extra ones. So all that information's in here. Plus if you'd like to purchase a drinks package, all that information's here as well. That was quick and easy, got our cruise card. Let's go through security and get on the ship, shall we? Through security, that just took a few seconds. Now we're gonna get onto the ship straight away, which is awesome. No waiting about, which we like, so let's get on. Can't wait for this cruise. It's gonna be a little bit of a different adventure. Some fantastic ports coming up. We get a long time in port as well, which is one of the bonus things about traveling with Celestial. And it's gonna be a great Greek adventure. Oh, Greek adventure filled with feta cheese, but no olives, please. And hopefully no Greek tragedies. All I can say, guys, is you feta be ready for this one. Sorry. Time to get on board, let's go. Thank you. Oh, David, I think we're going to our room. What are we going to number seven? Oh, number seven. Deck seven, let's go. So yeah, first things first, straight to the room. Looking forward to seeing what the rooms are like. Also, I've just noticed it tells you on the floor which way we're facing. So starboard, center, aft, and forward. Very clever indeed, we like that, don't we? Oh my gosh, David, we're literally by the elevator. Should we have a look? Let's we're go. We're actually doing this for the first time together. Oh, I have to oh. put my key in. <laughs> it's not just gonna open. There we go. Oh, check it out. Ooh, welcome to our cabin. So this is cabin number 7006. This is a junior balcony cabin. And wow, on first impressions, I've got to say I'm pretty impressed. I mean, look, real wood, real wood. She does look retro. Do bear in mind the ship is 40 years old, but wow, she looks fantastic. She looks in really good shape. Super, super clean. We've had a good look around. We did the clean test as well, and there's no dust anywhere, which is fantastic to see. There's no nasty smells either, which we've got to appreciate because we've had that on some of the older ships we've been on, but she smells like grease. Absolutely wonderful. Let's take you for a quick look around. As you come into the cabin, you've got some nice big wardrobes, which is great. Loads of space in there, which is lovely. You've got a mini fridge, as well as a safe and drawers. As you come further into the room, you've got a desk area as well, which is lovely. So there's three sockets, a European socket, a North American socket, as well as a USB socket. Thank you very much. Thank you, please. That's fantastic. Nice desk area. You've got a hairdryer as well, so you don't need to bring one on. The bed looks great, nice and big. It splits into a twin if you don't want to have it as a double. I do notice that there are no plugs by the bed, so you will have to plug things in on the side. It's an old ship, what can I say? One thing I've got to say though, the air conditioning is fabulous. It works really well. We've been on some of the older ships before where it isn't great. One thing that did baffle or kerfuffle me, what the heck is this? Why is there a curtain behind me and why does it go over the mirror? So the mirror is at the end of the bed. So is it to stop yourself from getting all kinky and looking at yourself in the mirror? I know that some cultures do cover mirrors because they don't want their spirits to leave them in the middle of the night. So maybe that is it. But I sleep on this side of the bed and my spirit would leave through the other mirror by the desk. So I'm not sure what all of this is about. Do let us know in the comment section if you're, if you're aware. And then maybe it's so you can kind of like do a reveal when you get changed in all of your posh clothes and stuff like that. Or maybe it's so you can close it when you're looking a little bit rough and you don't have to face yourself in the mirror. These junior balcony suites are really big and nice big size. Having just been on the Norwegian Spirit, another small ship, 
it's bigger than our balcony cabinet on that, which is lovely. You've got a television, which is in front of a lovely sofa, and you've got another little chair and a little coffee desk as well. But yeah, really nice, nice and bright, which we do appreciate as well. Let's open this um, uh, bathroom door. David, how's the bathroom? Hi. Sorry to interrupt you with all of the cases, which came very early as well. I'm sat on the toilet, but I'm not sat on the toilet, if you get my drift. This, in case you didn't know, when Ben does a cabin tour, this is where I sit with all of our stuff. And at least this one's got a bit of space to it. Well, it can fit two huge cases in you. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty spacious in here. But yeah, it's pretty decently sized. There's some shelving here. You get some nice products. I've not tried these yet. What's this? Hand and body milk. Oh, treat yourself. Or well, cover me in milk and call me Daisy. Something that you'd say. Right, do you want to show us the balcony? I can't open it first. One sec. One second, sorry. How does this work? Have you locked it? I haven't. Are you having problems, David? I don't want to break it. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> there we go. Nice big balcony space. This is actually a really huge balcony. You could do your morning yoga on this. Very nice. Yeah, nice big balcony. Chair and table so you can watch the beautiful views that I'm sure we're going to get here in Greece and in Turkey as well. Um, there's not many balconies on the ship. This is one of the few cabins that uh, has a balcony, but I know the other ships and one of the newer ships that are coming, they've got many more balconies. So we're really lucky to have a balcony on this one. And I can't wait to sit out here with a glass of wine and look at that beautiful sunset. Yeah, so pleasantly surprised. Our cabin is spacious, clean, comfortable, and while it might not be the most modern of cabins and it doesn't have all the modern bells and whistles, it's gonna be a great base for us to get between some of these beautiful ports and islands that we're gonna be visiting the next couple of days. Plus, it's super affordable as well. We're gonna tell you all about the cost and everything and our itinerary in a minute. But before we do anything, David, oh, he's getting them now, we've gotta get our life jackets and do things old style because we're gonna go and head to deck five with our life jacket. So this is the muster drill. Let's do this. Emergency here on a cruise. I'm just kidding, I'm not doing that clickbait. Life jackets in hand. It's been a while since we've done this actually to take the life jacket down. Most cruise lines, you don't even do these anymore, do you? Thank you. Gosh, yes, it has been a while since we've had to take the old life jackets out, but we've just headed to our muster station now. It's somewhere on this little outdoor deck, which is really nice. It's got like a little walk around, which we do like to see. Forgot my sunglasses and it's super sunny. Rookie mistake. Anyway, let's get this official bit out of the way, then we can have some fun and show you around the ship, can't we? After 105 cruises, you think I'll know how to do this with my eyes closed? All done. That wasn't too bad at all. I feel like a right idiot though. Look at the state of me. That's it. We are off. Goodbye, Athens. See you in one week. It's gonna be an amazing cruise. I'm really looking forward to this. Next stop is some of those beautiful islands here in Greece. It's quite a busy point to do. We've got quite a few ships and ferries in. So we're gonna wave goodbye to them. No. Oh, yay, the lady in green wave. As I said, the Celestial Crystal is 40 years old and actually due to be scrapped soon, making way for a newly acquired ship. The ship is very small and quite basic but you're not supposed to spend much time on board. There's shops with souvenirs and all of the essentials and clothes, and it has some nice outdoor areas with a hot tub and a bar at the back of the ship. Then there's a solarium with a retracting roof, pool and bar. Back inside is a small theatre and several different bars and lounges, some with live entertainment and two main dining rooms. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building a stunning website. We've been using Squarespace for years and we just love its user friendliness. We effortlessly construct entire pages within minutes thanks to its extensive template library. Even better, these templates are fully customizable to align seamlessly with your brand identity in just mere seconds. Squarespace's cutting edge fluid engine eliminates the hassle of creating a stunning website. No prior design or web skills are required. You simply drag and drop the different elements. In fact, we whipped up this entire page in just half an hour and Squarespace ensures your website looks impeccable on all devices, from smartphones, tablets to desktops without the need of additional coding. Moreover, Squarespace offers powerful analytic tools to help you better understand your audience and identify high-performing content. It truly provides all of the essentials for building, maintaining, and expanding your online presence. 
Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Ben and David to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh, so on our little tour of the ship, we bumped into the buffet. Bumped into it, you know us guys. We had to have a quick look around. Oh my gosh, it looks absolutely fantastic. We love Greek food and the food looks super fresh, super lovely. Much better than some other cruise lines like the big boys like Royal Caribbean and Norwegian. Lovely, I can't wait to eat in there. Anyway, let's go get ready for dinner and unpack. Ah, so we're back in the cabin and like that famous poet Pink One said, before we get this party started, let's tell you a little bit about Celestial Cruises, shall we? Because you might not have heard of them because they are a very, very small company indeed. And they offer something very unique to all of the other big cruise lines like Royal Caribbean and Norwegian. They offer amazing cruises in the Mediterranean and especially Greece as well. We're on a seven night idyllic Aegean cruise and it's going to be stopping at some of the most wonderful islands and ports in Greece and we are so excited and that's something that Celestial does. They give you an authentic Greek vacation holiday like no other cruise line and we felt that already. We've been on the ship a few hours, we've just sailed away and the crew are absolutely amazing. So friendly, there's Greek food all around, there's Greek music. I feel like I'm in Mamma Mia or something. It's blooming fantastic. Whilst the ships are not like ships by Royal Caribbean and Norwegian, it's made up by the charm. We've been on old ships like Margaritaville that were awful. This one isn't. She's really well upkept. She's not going to be around forever and like we mentioned earlier on, they're getting a brand new ship called the Celestial Journey, which will actually offer more balcony cabins which is great because you really don't want to miss out of the amazing views that you get of Greece and the Greek islands when you sail through them. So one of the best things about Celestial in our opinion, and we're not biased here because they've invited us on board, is that their cruises are very, very good value. This cruise next year, the seven night idyllic Aegean cruise, calling it a port every single day. There is absolutely no sea days on this itinerary and you get ages in port as well. Some ports were staying until 2 a.m. So it's almost like an over Overnight. So you can even get off on one of the islands and have dinner there, which is just amazing. So this cruise this time next year in May is only £699, which is $870. Now, that's not all. It also includes basic drinks with your dinner, so including alcohol drinks like wine and beer. It includes all gratuities as well. All of the restaurants apart from the specialty restaurant and that's called the inclusive package. Now, if you want to boost things up a little bit, you can book the exclusive package, which is a little bit more expensive. That comes in at about £909 at the time of filming or about $1,130. Now, this includes everything we've just talked about, but it also ups the shore excursion voucher to £130 value, plus you get the premium drinks package as well. So you get so many more drinks and coffee and things like that, which is fantastic, really good value. Now our cabin is not an inside cabin. Our cabin is a junior suite cabin. So if you wanted to book this for this time next year at the pricing today, it would cost £1,189. That's $1,480. But the most thing that we're looking forward to is visiting these unique islands like Mykonos and Santorini, those picture perfect, beautiful Greek islands that you've always seen. We are just so excited for this cruise. The ship is older and it is missing all the mod cons. It doesn't have slides or things like that. This is a way for you to get from A to B and see as much of Greece as you can. And being able to really see the ports, go into the ports, eat food in the ports, enjoy the ports, and really immerse yourself in the Greek culture. Honestly, David, I've got goose pimples thinking about it. I am just so excited about this cruise. It is ridiculous. I've always wanted to see Santorini. We're going to get to see it at sunset, which is amazing. And the ship's tiny. She only holds 1,200 people. All of the ships from Celestial are around 2,000 or under. So these are smaller ships as well. So you're not going to be crammed in with thousands of other people trying to get on and off and overwhelming these smaller ports that some of the bigger ships don't get to go to. Anyway, I keep waffling on. I really do i'm very very sorry we need to get ready and go get some food don't we but we're going to unpack but we don't need to show you that uh david i thought you were unpacking sorry i was just enjoying a nice little beer and relaxing for a minute there okay boss 
Oh, and because the ship is tiny, it's so easy to get about. We're just gonna go to the buffet tonight because we did drop by there on our ship tour and it looked great. So let's go up and eat. I think it's only two floors and we're there. How easy is that? So I went for a salad for my starters. Yes, I'm having more than one course. Got a bit of everything, guys. A bit of a smorgasbord of salad. Well, really good. I really like their Caesar sauce. It's like a yellow color. So it's not the normal Caesar sauce color, but it's really, really delicious. It's got like a nice little taste to it. Got some cheese in there, pasta, bacon pasta, yummy. I also completely raided all the different salad options. I'd made myself a big fat Greek salad. Lovely garlic breads, loads of the bread selection. And these, which are, I don't know the name of, but they are so tasty and I absolutely love them. They're like vine leaves wrapped. Delish. David, let's call them Greek fun bags. Well, I've gone up and gone for my second course. I went for a bit more of a substantial meal this time. Oh, well, sit me in a chair and call me seated. Oh, they are delicious. Those crispy onions are just freaking delicious. Ooh, that lamb, it's tender. Mary had that little lamb and she did it proud because it is blooming delicious. I've got to say, I'm very, very, very impressed with the buffet. It's very good, small choice, but it's about the quality, quality over quantity. Right, I'm gonna get back to my lamb. Meh. And of course, no dinner is complete without a dessert. And I went and got an apple pie tart thingamabob with some custard. Oh, the apple pie is absolutely delicious, but the lemon tart, far too sweet. Oh my gosh, I like sweet, but that's overly sweet. Other than that, really good first meal, impressed. Check this out. Doesn't it look so fun? I don't even know what it is. I just picked it up because it looked like a birthday party. It's got like crumble praline, a white chocolate thing with sprinkles on it. I thought that was going to be really sweet, but it's not. It's actually quite a subtle flavour. Oh my gosh, I am so stuffed, guys. I am so, so full after that meal. But now it's time for bed for us because we're a little bit jet lagged because we've just been to blooming Hawaii in Alaska. So up early tomorrow for some amazing adventures in Thessaloniki, Greece. So join us in two minutes. Well, a very good morning. Welcome back. Like I said, we're here in Thessaloniki today and we're going to take you off to explore. The weather isn't fantastic, but that's not going to put a damper on anything, to get the pun, guys, because it has rained a bit, but we're going to get off and have a fab day in port. Getting the last bits of uh, stuff ready, so we always take a bag with us that's got lots of stuff in it, like suntan lotion, sun cream. Uh, we've got a Ziploc bag, just in case we need to pop anything wet in there. We've got ID in case we need it as well, so our driver's licenses, and just a few bits and bobs, just in case we need them on land. So let's get off. Here's David, let's go. We are in Thessaloniki today, and we are ready to go and explore. We've got our tickets for our shore excursion. This is the first for us, our first pop, because we haven't been to any of them on this cruise. So it's gonna be super exciting. Let's go. So that was super easy. We met with our shore excursion group in the theater and now we're heading to the bus. Let's go. Now we are off the ship. That was very, very easy indeed. Greeted by a beautiful little Greek building. This is actually Greece's second largest city, which is really cool. Again, the ship looks so tiny. She's so cute and small, I love it. Anyway, let's go find out where we're going, guys and get on this bus, shall we? Shore excursions, they are what they are, aren't they? But they are good. You do get to see places, but they are a little bit annoying sometimes. Love the artwork, that's absolutely hilarious. Now I very sillily didn't, sillily? Is that even a word? I very sillily didn't even pack a jacket, guys, and it is quite chilly today, because it is almost the end of May, so I thought Greece would be a little bit warmer. Plus after this trip, we're heading over to Asia, so it's gonna be very hot there. So do bring layers, do not be like me and forget to bring a blooming coat or even just a light jacket, which would have been lovely now. I'm sure in an hour or two, when it gets a bit warmer, it'll be fine. Anyway, I see our buses, our transportation for the day. So we're at our first spot here in Thessaloniki. We have jumped on one of the bus tours and this is a scenic bus tour that's going to show us all of the city and show us all the different points and the highlights. We're gonna stay on the bus for some parts of it, get off the bus and also have time to explore by ourselves. I do have one of these devices. These are called whisper devices and it means that I can hear the tour guide who's currently talking about our first stop here and uh, we're given these by the cruise line to use on the tour and then you hand these back in. So just behind me there's these really cool pirate ships which leave every half an hour or so and they go on little 30 minute sailings and all you do is pay for the coffee and drinks that you buy on board. So they're a bit like a floating coffee shop which is pretty damn cool. It's a really beautiful place, it's quite epic here. 
quite gladiatory, that sort of thing. Oh my gosh, it's really hard to talk with ear, with somebody talking in my ears as well, it's hilarious. I feel like I'm on TV. Okay, back to the studio now. So we've came to the very top of Thessaloniki now. It was a lovely journey up here and we can see the castle and all of the old walls that surrounded the whole city. It is crazy to see all of this history here. It's absolutely spectacular. And not only do we have the castle up here, if you do want to go inside, it's six euros each, but you can see plenty from the outside. But you have some stunning, spectacular views of the whole city. It looks pretty incredible up here, it really does. We can even see our cruise ship and it's gorgeous. Anyway, enough of looking at rocks. The next rock I want to look at is a rock of sugar going into some coffee. Let's go to a little local coffee shop and sample some local delight, shall we? Thessaloniki is famous for its food. Can I just say how hard it is to <laughs> film here, guys? The Greek people are very lovely, but they're very loud. Yes. And every time we start filming, somebody starts screaming. It's so funny. <laughs> they're not screaming, Ben. They're whispering in Greek. Good luck, David. Get this thing done quick. <laughs> I just wanted to say Thessaloniki is famous for food, and I'm all down for that. Let's go and try out some food and coffee. Look at this. Doesn't it look amazing? We've grabbed ourselves a beautiful seat with a lovely view it is really spectacular guys it's like some type type of like museum the whole place is a museum there's so much culture here also got ourselves a coffee as well two coffees and this giant croissant and i do mean giant look at the size it's bigger than my head five dollars how crazy is that? Oh, five euros, sorry. We're in euro land, not dollar land now. Let's have a little taste, shall we? This was a euro. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Let me go rip it open. Holy moly shirt balls. That's got some Nutella in there. Let's have a little taste. Mm, I'm having a Greek gasm. The coffee culture here is everywhere. People just grab a coffee, sit outside. Most people do sit outside and smoke, we'll warn you. So we just went a little bit further away. And coffees are usually like a euro 50 to two euros. Why not? Oh, Julius Caesar. Blooming hell, the Greek like their coffee strong. It's like blooming tar. It's like lava. Oh my gosh. I do appreciate a good coffee, but that's even going too far by my standards. I think I'll need about half a shot to have a normal coffee here. That's great. And they're so cheap as well. We have noticed that Greece in general is quite cheap for things like magnets, souvenirs, coffees, all of that jazz. Really, really good. It's one of the great things about visiting here as well. Really, really good value. The pavements are not up as well upkept as you would find in maybe the US or the UK or anywhere like that. So if you are in a chair, you do need to be careful with that. Also bring some good walking shoes. There is a lot of steep hills as well. Um, so there is quite a bit of walking sometimes. Sometimes where the bus parks, there'll be about a five or 10 minute walk to where you're actually going to view. So we went to one of the oldest churches here in Thessaloniki. It's pretty in there. There was a couple of baptisms going on in there as well. There were so many lights and things. It was like a plumbing TV studio. There was like photographers, videographers, lighting, microphones, sound. It was crazy. It was like a, a proper event. Crazy, eh? But we did just witness the most hilarious thing I've ever, ever seen. So there's a couple of baptisms here today and they have little cake stands and lovely stands for the guests to help themselves. Some woman from our tour just grabbed a cake and some water. I don't think she's supposed to do that. It was quite funny though. It's just for the guests only. But get in there. You've got to have massive respect for somebody helping themselves to cake that isn't theirs. So we had the option to get off our tour a little bit earlier in the square just to have a look around. And we are going to take advantage of that because I'm hungry. Let's go find something to eat, shall we? Oh, I have to say I'm very excited now, guys. It's sweet shop time. So one of the things here in Greece you'll find a lot of are coffee shops and sweet shops. And we've just been in the most amazing pastry shop. It had so many types of cakes, muffins, beautiful, delicate little ice cream things, big old chocolate cakes. I went and got myself a delicious quiche. I think it's got cheese and spinach in, she said. Let's have a little try of it. I am so excited. I was like a kid in a sweetie shop, quite literally in there. It was amazing. Anyway, I'm starving. The two is over. It was as cheap as chips. Everything's like two euros. I mean, it is so cheap. So that's about $2, so much cheaper than the US, much cheaper than the UK. So let's waste no more time and get this bad boy right in my mouth. It's zucchini or courgette in the UK, and it's just filled with feta cheese. Oh my gosh. It's like a taste of grease in my mouth, and I am here for it, because this is freaking delicious. Oh, I just want to eat all of the cakes and all the pastries. Two was really good. It gave us a good overview of this area, and it lasted about five hours. Plus we had a couple of stops where you could um, explore on your own, which is always really nice to do. But as I mentioned earlier, Thessaloniki is famous for its food. 
You can find these little coffee shops and patisseries all over the city. Not just this one, they all re look really, really good. And this is what they are famous for as well. I got myself a nice vegetable one with sun-dried tomatoes and it is freaking delicious. The only thing this is missing is a big dollop of HP brown sauce. Then it would be perfect. Oh, so I also got myself, look at this, a caramel pastry. Let's have a little try. It's covered in caramel. I'm, I'm very happy right now. It's not just Alexander the Great, it's bloody pastry of the great. That is absolutely freaking yummer-licious. It's just layers and layers of pastry, and then it's stuffed with this dirty caramel sauce that's got a salty taste to it. Ah, I love handheld food, and this handheld food is like a champion of foods. Yummy McYum face. Time to get back on the ship. It is quite quiet here because it is Sunday today and it's the general election as well. So they're picking a new prime minister. Well, so hello everybody. We're here in the main dining room. There's two main dining rooms on board that are complimentary. And of course you've got the buffet as well. So we basically headed straight up to the restaurant to eat some dinner. Super excited. It's just your normal fare, but there is very much a Greek twist to everything, which is really fantastic because we're big fans of Greek food. We've popped in our orders. We've got a bread basket. They've got Lurpak butter, which FYI is the best butter ever. It is blooming delicious. I'd just be happy with a bread basket. Not gonna lie there, Ben. Well, I have to say my first dish makes me very happy. I've got pea soup. I don't think I've had pea soup in like absolutely ages, but it looks lovely and it's a big old bowl as well. So let's go have a little try, shall we? That is delicious, really hot, really tasty. I do love a good soup on a cruise ship. You can't really muck that up usually and this is no exception. I'm gonna be dipping some of that bread in here as well because that bread is very good with the butter. David, yours looks super impressive. You could say my first dish looks rather dishy. Right, let me tuck into this. It's like a baked aubergine with some cheese on top. That is super unusual, really flavorful. I can definitely taste the aubergine, but it comes with some sort of like mint sauce on top as well, which is really unusual and absolutely full of flavor. Oh, I am greeking out at this next course. It looks really, really delicious. I've got to Apollo jive for all of these puns. They're really bad guys, I know it, sorry. I went for the, basically the Greek version of lasagna. It's wobbling because the ship's moving a little bit. So funny, we've just left the port now. That is yum-tastic. It is like a really delicious, beautiful lasagna, but it's a little bit different because it's got a different type of pasta. It has like little pasta noodles in there instead of like the flying sheets. Really delicious beef in there as well, tomatoes, lots of cheese on top. I'm happy. And I got what is again a Greek version or at least a Middle Eastern version of sort of like a salmon roulade. So it's salmon with boiled eggs, spinach and rice all housed in a pastry. Salmon is really tasty. I absolutely love the pastry. It is so crispy and delicious. And the beautiful white sauce on the side is very creamy. All in all, a fantastic main dining room meal. Oh, and it's now dessert time. It's my favorite time of the meal. I went with the chocolate brownie and ice cream. The ice cream is delicious. I do wish the brownie was warm though, because I think it would add a little bit of a ooh la la to it. But very good indeed, like it. And I didn't really fancy any of the desserts that were on tonight because I'm not a huge lover of baklava or panna cotta. Uh, but they do have an international cheese selection. But I am very jealous of Ben's brownie and ice cream because that looks delicious. I think this spoon will be stretching over to that side of the table as well. Oh, oh, oh no, getting batted away. Oh, so we're all finished with dinner. I've got to admit, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as it was. Because this cruise line is cheaper than some of the cruise lines. What's better than anything else is the fact that the food is different. It's Greek food, so it's not all of the same stuff you get on every other cruise line. Super unusual, super tasty. We feel like we're being transported into Greece, which we're in anyway, every step of the way. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow in Kusadasi, our first ever time in Turkey. Well, I promised we'd be here and we are. So welcome to Kusadasi here in Turkey. It's our first ever time in Turkey, let alone cruising here. And it's blooming miserable. Come on weather, cheer up a little bit. It is raining and it's quite chilly, which is not great, but it is gonna get a little bit better, hopefully. We've got a really good tour book today, so come with us. Let's waste no more time. Let's head off, you come on with us. Come on, come on, come on guys. So our first stop on this tour of Kusadasi is Ephesus. So yes, this is the ancient Greek city. 
and it is absolutely crazy. Almost 3,000 years old and it is still so intact. It's one of the most beautiful ancient cities that still remain in the world today and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is so crazy to see how this city, once of 200,000 people, is still here after all of that time. It's pretty epic and it's amazing how much of a good condition it's all in as well. So we're going to have a look around and explore and just enjoy some of these views of this incredible place. I mean, what a awesome place to see. We're walking down the main street now and it is 700 meters long. The thing that I have been taken aback with is just how well preserved and how it's so clear where the buildings were, what they were used for. It is actually incredible and quite breathtaking, frankly, to be walking through so much history. Amazing. But I do have to say, bring some good shoes because it's a little bit bumpy. I didn't think of smooth roads 3,000 years ago. We're just walking on one of the streets now where the chariots went down and it's just crazy. You can even still see the writing on buildings that were built in 14 BC. It's nuts, guys. This is incredible. You are proper immersed in it as well, which is just fabulous. So we've came to the bathrooms now and Back in these days, it was a little bit different to how it is now. There was no private stalls or anything like that, private rooms. It was just lots of holes at the side of the wall where you plonked yourself down and did your business. But it wasn't just a quick thing either. You would come here to kind of converse with people, talk to people and maybe spend an afternoon here. And funnily enough, there's a little pond in the middle that used to be filled with frogs that made lots of noise to cover the sounds of going to the toilet. Oh my gosh, guys, that's hilarious, isn't it? Holy moly, we've came to the center of the town now. Oh, it is crazy. Well, you've got a huge library in front of us and all of these amazing features. It is just absolutely spectacular, even with the baby crying. One of the most incredible things is that you can actually walk up the stairs, get right into these places as well. I have never been able to do that anywhere else. So I'm stood right in the library now. This is just nuts with an amazing view of the whole of the city. Now, the great thing about this excursion was that we had our tour guide with us all the time and it included the entry and the transportation. The excursions on Celestial are all priced quite reasonably. This excursion was 70 euros, which isn't too bad because that included your transport and also your entry. Plus, we're going to be doing something else after this as well. There's going to be a second part to this excursion. So our next stop, of course, we're in Turkey. We had to go to a carpet factory, a, a rug factory. It is incredible here. As soon as we walked in, you could smell that new fabric smell and everything in here is 100% handmade. Some of these carpets take up to four years to make, four years, how crazy is that? and they are spectacular. We saw some demonstrations about how the carpets are made from silkworms as well, which is really awesome, and how they're so delicately put, put together completely manually. There's no machines here. It's the real stuff. It is fantastic. And of course, you can buy one of the carpets as well. It's a must do if you're here in Turkey. You have to come to a factory like this. It is amazing. Some of the designs are absolutely spectacular. And the silk carpets are to die for. You should feel them. They, oh, they're amazing. <gasps> this is amazing. Anyway, they're going to give us some drinks to try now. Shall we go and have a, have a taste? So to start off the carpet showcase, we've been brought around some drinks. There's beers, wines, and a Turkish version of ouzo, which is even stronger than the Turkish ouzo. It kind of looks like milky water. Apparently, you'll be buying carpets. I think that's the plan, is to buy a carpet after you drink this. Ooh, flaming dragons. That tastes like pure aniseed. Ooh, that is hot. Hot, 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 hot. Ooh, and I got the lovely apple tea. That truly is a Turkish delight. Treat yourself. So after a couple of glasses of the Turkish ouzo, um, I just purchased a 17 foot rug for our front room, plus 42 scarves that everybody is going to be getting for Christmas. They're really friendly. They, they really did ply the, uh, the Turkish ouzo. Wonder why, I'm just joking. They were really lovely guys. They, um, 
We were chatting to them for ages, talking to us about the carpets, all the different types. All in all, it's been a really fantastic day. I do feel like we've got done something really special. So we're back in port and we're gonna get back on the ship. The port area, lots of shops and things like that and a few little areas you can walk into. Anyway, we're inviting you to join us on a seven course Greek meal. Come on, let's get back on board. The six or seven course Greek tasting menu is an upcharge. It costs around 60 euros per person and the restaurant is tiny and very romantic, holding just up to about 12 people. The food was excellent, so tasty and so different to your usual cruise food. Each course was beautifully presented and prepared and came with a selection of different Greek wines. We just loved all of the local flavors. The dessert was worth it too after all of the effort required to get into it. Oh my gosh, so as you can see from that meal, it was absolutely blooming spectacular. Just wanted to give a big shout out to all of our patrons, just to say a huge thank you for supporting us. You too can become a patron by clicking the link in the description section below. And in return, we give you things like extra behind the scenes footage, early access to our footage, ad free footage, so there's no annoying ads on any of our videos, Plus we do a monthly Zoom call with you as well, so we get to chat to you one-on-one, -on -one, which is fantastic. We recommend that you watch our video of the Norwegian Jade. You can click on the screen right now to give it a watch. It's another time that we went around Greece, but on a different ship, and it was really good, so click on the screen and watch now. We'll see you next time. That's it till next time. Happy, Happy cruising. cruising.